and the rear end, you don't do any back combing. This is just one, two. You never do more than two strikes of the thinning shear. And then you are constantly going back, constantly, and brushing it to see what you have. All over the place, back and forth, up and down. Uh, I did, I guess, this big report in high school, biggest research paper I ever did, you know, one of those, and it was on Michelangelo. And it so impressed me when I read about this man's life and just the way he thought, just the genius thinking. He would sit and stare at a piece of marble and stare and stare and stare. And he said, within that piece of marble, is the image and then with that image in mind he would just take his tools and he would chip away the piece of stone or marble that didn't belong there to end up with the final image that was already built in to that piece of marble and that is exactly what we are doing when we sculpture hair. You've got to have a finished idea in your brain of how you want this dog to look at the end. And honestly, all I'm doing is taking away all the hair that I don't want. I'm sculpturing all this hair to get down to the final vision, if you will. I was very grateful. I went to Rome once for 10 days. I did get to go to Vatican City. And oh my God, Neil, you're the Catholic. What's the name of that statue with Jesus' body in Mary's lap draped over? My, my appear. My oh, appear. oh my God. I saw that. Oh my God. I just, I, I, it, it put shivers up my spine. It was. I, emotionally, it was one of the most emotional pieces of art I'd ever seen, of course. But um, I already knew that about Michelangelo because when I went, I was in my mid 20s. So I just stood there and walked around that piece and looked and just imagined him with all of his tools, just chipping away at that marble to get down to that image that was already inside that piece of marble. And boy, knowing that about him gave me so much more of an appreciation for what I was looking at. And of course, we all know that Michelangelo would get cadavers and cut open the bodies. He was one of the first that did that. And he would look at muscle and sinew and blood veins and bone so that when he sculpted did, he was seen right through the surface of that person's body to the, to the blood veins and the muscle and the sinew under it. And boy, when you see one of his statues, boy, can you tell. That is exactly what. And same thing with these dogs. If you learn the breed standard, I'm not just looking at Connor's picture over there and trying to match this dog to that, to that picture because I do know the breed standard. I'm looking through this dog's top layer into the depths of his body, into his bone structure. That's why I trim this. This was bone structure back here that I was trimming to, not, not a picture on the wall. All right, so you can see, and because he's been growing out for two months, and again, I don't recommend that, this is way too long for a dog to be up on a table. If you have a dog in specials coat, you want to keep it in specials coat, I would highly recommend that you bathe it once a week, towel it for 24 hours once a week, but then groom it at least every two weeks. With Connor in full specials coat, I had to do him every week. If I went two weeks, it was like, whoa, a week too long. That underline, that will, for me, will be last, I'm thinking. Anyway, so I've got, I've got more 
scissor work to do on this dog on this side but that will be done tomorrow after I towel him and get this hair straight but I want to bring the camera up close so that you can see what I have done for both sets of people here bring it up close right 